going on everyone this is nick with return them right and we are back with another saltwater sportsman adventure so big shout out to saltwater sportsman folks for putting these trips together um today i am in marco island and we are about to head out with captain tanner eisen of real deal charters i have not fished with him before but he looks like he gets on the fish big time so i'm really excited additionally uh he actually went through our program and we sent him free release gear last year so it's always great to get on board with people who uh already know about the program um, joined with us today, we have Victor from Landshark Outdoors, we have Brooke from Brooke Christ Outdoors, and we have their videographer, Dennis. Um, I've known Dennis for a few years since I used to work at IGFA. He's an awesome dude, so we should have some really, really, really high quality footage from the day. The plan is to target Gags, which just opened here September 1st in um, the Gulf of Mexico, Yellowtail Snapper, Mangrove Snapper, and if we run into any red grouper or red snapper along the way, we'll be well equipped to release them with descending devices and venting tools. Um, so we're gonna unpack the car here and uh, hop on the boat here and we'll see you out there. All right, guys, I forgot to mention, it is uh, zero foot seas and about four to five mile per hour winds today, so it should be a perfect day to run offshore. Here's the boat we're headed out on here in a minute should be an awesome day out there. What do we got going on today, Captain Tanner? So we're gonna stop here, grab some pinfish from the traps. Um, we're gonna run out first spot, probably about 60 miles, stop and see if we can kind of find some gags there, maybe some other fish. Then we're gonna run out a little bit further to some deeper water, try to target some bigger gags. Then um, after that, we're probably gonna work our way in and hit the last spot on a little ledge that holds a lot of yellowtail and try to chum, chum up to the top and see what happens. All right, yellowtail and gags. Yeah. Sounds like a good plan for September in the Gulf of Mexico. We made some bait right there. Oh. I don't know how it was in there. Yeah, we'll put right in here. set a descending device up before we make our first drop. We're fishing in about 115 feet. So I'm gonna align this split ring with the screw head, push and turn so this is set to release at 100 feet. And then we're gonna set it on this bent butt here. Should be nice and easy to reel up the weight if we need to. So I'll loop this swivel on real quick so that's looped on and then pop this open and just attach it to the three-way swivel just like that and it's all rigged and ready to use if we catch anything that we need to release we're shooting for gags but if we run into any red grouper or red snapper We'll pop them on here and send them back down. They'll recompress naturally and be free to swim off. So this right here, this is a little pinfish. These guys make the craziest vibrations down there on your line and that's why they're snapper grouper candy. Extremely hardy baits. Little fish can't really pick them apart. That's why they're so good for grouper, mangrove snapper, yellow tails, um, gag grouper. So we're gonna make the first drop right here. Got some 80 pound tough line fluorocarbon leader. 7-0 Mustad hook, and I'm gonna hook this pinfish right here on the bottom of the jaw and out the top, just like that. So he's able to swim freely. We got like four or five feet a liter, eight ounce egg weight, and I'm really excited because 
You know when you get a new bike on Christmas? Well, Bricky and I just got two brand new setups for this trip. This is an Ocean Tackle International Rod, really stout grouper rod. And we got Talica 20s. We got some 65 pound braid, 80 pound mono top shot. And you guys can find that linked below. But Tanner said, if you got any big heavy setups you want to try out, you know, bring them. Cause we're going to try to get into some really big guy grouper later. Dropping down to the bottom. Like I said, we're in 115 feet. And Tanner also put out some chum, and there are already yellowtails in the chum slick. He's trying to catch some blue runners. But we have the opportunity to hopefully catch some big guy groupers here. That's what we're after today. I'd love to catch a big grouper today. You're on? Yep. Sorry, Brookie. I had to steal your thunder on this side. First pinfish down. I don't think it lasted more than 15 seconds, guys. It was like as soon as it hit the bottom. And it's a red grouper. We forgot to throw back. Okay. All right, guys. So this is our very first fish of the trip. This is a little pretty red grouper and these are actually out of season right now in the gulf of mexico and we have a very special guest on the boat today mr nick right here from a really important foundation here in florida called return them right so nick would you say this is the perfect candidate for the descending this, device this is the perfect candidate for a descending device you can see the stomach is coming out of the mouth of the fish from barotrauma so the gases expand inside the body and actually evert the stomach out of the mouth. A lot of anglers think that's actually the swim bladder, but it's actually their stomach. Um, and if you feel there, you can feel it's nice and firm. That body's full of air. So your two options would be to either vent the fish or descend it. Uh, venting is putting a needle in the side and letting that gas out. We have the descending devices rigged up. It's a little safer for the fish and for the angler. So we'll just clip it on, send it back down to 100 feet, and they'll be free to swim off. All right, you guys got to check out this crazy device. It is a game changer when it comes to preventing fish mortality. So come and meet me up here. You can see that stomach coming out of the mouth, and actually a crab was spit up. You can see it right there. See that crab, Victor? Oh my gosh, that crab <laughs> is moving, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's like still alive. But what we'll do is we'll use the sequelizer. It's set to release at 100 feet. We're gonna clip it on the lower jaw of the fish. You always wanna do the bottom jaw because it's a little thicker, you get a better grip. And we'll send this guy down and the gases will recompress naturally and they'll swim off and be free to grow, spawn, and be caught again, hopefully when it's in season. So once that fish pops off, the device will actually speed up because there will be no resistance from pulling the fish down. Once it speeds up, you know the fish popped off and you just reel it back up and it's ready to use again. to catch some grouper but we're just gonna try to put some of these in the box because this is incredible to see right here let's get after them toss this back we're seeing some big yellowtail and some big uh mangrove snapper in the chum slick so i'm gonna try to feed it back see what happens the chum slick is loaded with fish and we're on Come on. Yep. We just tossed <laughs> all those big fish in the chum slick. We just tossed on a half of a pinfish on a light setup, light leader. And we got either 
a yellowtail or a mangrove on. Looks like we got a nice mangrove. Yes, beautiful mangrove. They're so good, such good eating too. Look at that fish. Look at the size of that thing. Oh my gosh. That is beautiful. <laughs> Look at this mangrove. <laughs> Look at the size of that thing. <laughs> that is a healthy mangrove right there. That is a stud mangrove right there. Oh my god. Well done, dude. dude when that thing came up, I was like, oh my god. That's crazy. Alright, so descending device on this one, right? No, this one's going in the ice box. <laughs> this is insane right now. Flag yellow tail, that's a 17, 18 inch yellow tail. Basically, sight system right here on top of the water. 15 minutes in position with Captain Hey, we're all set. Every single time we shoot with these guys, it is just spectacular. Look at this thing. There's a little mustache you have in the corner of the mouth. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Check it out. Stud yellowtails. Tanner's hooked up behind the camera. The ball is just loaded up behind the boat. We're going to be filling the box today with some delicious snapper. Let's get Bates back down. I know. We got to get him out there. Tanner's on himself. Look at that. I couldn't just stand here. Quick <laughs> got snagged. That's how thick they are. All right, we just hammered yellowtail and mangrove snapper, so I'm gonna send down big pinfish to the bottom. Talica 20, try to get a gag grouper up. That one, dude, I don't have money. I put it right on his mouth. Yeah, can you shake the chum bag? Yeah. Got a Talica 20 here. Honestly, a really nice reel. On ocean tackle rod. Can't forget the return them right hat. Extensively used. Let us know what you think of these. Got me in the rocks. Oh, I still feel them. Should I let them try to load some out? Yeah, if you need to the rocks. What does the bottom look like here? Big leg. I don't know, you're gonna find out. <laughs> I'm on that camera. True. <laughs> yeah, let us come out. Oh, I got him, I think. Yep, got him. There you go, there you go. Come on. Feels a little better than that last rig. Got a gag. Yeah. Keeper. Oh, black grouper. Nice. Bonus nice. round. There we go. <laughs> Big mangoes and a black grouper. Yeah, Nick, Come on, Captain Tanner. <laughs> Talk about a good spot, huh? <laughs> Look at that circle hook. Perfect. Honestly, one of the most beautiful groupers. See those copper spots there? That's one of the telltale signs for a black grouper over a gag. Also, they have more rectangular shaped patterns right here as opposed to gags are more irregular. Just a beautiful fish right there. Five? 
right there. 26? 27. 27? Yeah. No, 26. 26. Send another one down. Had to retie quickly. See if he's interested in biting again. And we're on. This might be another mangrove. Oh my no, god! Flag. Look at that flag. The most unreal day of yellowtail fishing I've ever had. Stud yellowtails all day long. And stud mangroves. <laughs> Look at that. Enormous mangroves too in the mix. This is insane. <laughs> All right, so we've uh, been slaying the mangroves. We had caught quite a bunch of them and we're actually gonna release this one. We're fishing in 115 and we're gonna show you how to use this fish saver descending device. So this is an inverted hook style descending device where you basically just go through the soft tissue under the chin. So through the soft tissue, out the mouth, like that. And then you lower the fish into the water like this and basically you want to drop the fish down in one motion so that the hook carries the fish back down to depth and then once it hits the bottom or your desired depth you simply reel back in and the, the hook slides right out like a skewer and the fish will be free to swim off so we'll drop this down here ready and Alright guys, this has been an absolutely insane first spot. I mean, we caught keeper black grouper, endless keeper mangrove snapper, endless keeper yellowtail snapper, uh, released a bunch of red grouper as well. We're actually going to be leaving the spot soon because we caught so many yellowtail mangrove. We're going to go out deeper and look for some big gag grouper. But man, this has been hard to beat. I mean, we've only been here for less than a couple hours, one spot, and Captain Tanner with Real Deal has put us on some fish of a lifetime here on light tackle too i mean these are just massive mangrove snapper bunch of yellow tail and a nice black grouper in the mix all right we just got to the second spot we we're in 157 feet uh victor just dropped down a big blue runner brooke you have a big blue runner on too um no i have a uh, pinfish. pinfish all right we're looking for the big gags Second spot, I'm gonna drop down an octopus jig, which we'll see what happens. I got my biggest gag ever on it, little pink octopus jig. So, stay tuned. All right, octopus jig down, Saragossa, 8,000. See ya. All right. I have this drag almost locked down completely. Come on. Pretty sure you're supposed to use assist hooks with this octopus, but I just have it as a big J. <laughs> Turn him right, catches everything. <laughs> this guy's on fire today. <clears throat> Could be a big red snapper. That's what I'm thinking. It's still it's run. Yeah.
There's like, I think like half a step to your right. Me? Yeah, okay, perfect. Got color. I think I see red. Awesome button. Oh my god. Bring it over here. Look at this. Are you kidding? <laughs> oh my god. Nick! <laughs> It had a remora on it. Wow, that's impressive. <laughs> you know it's a big mutton when you've got its own remora. There you go. <laughs> yeah, a PB mutton right there on an octopus jig on a spinning setup. Oh my I gosh. You won't bring him, will you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're Look, that. Look at that. Stomach coming out. That's an incredible fish right there. Wow. Thank you, buddy. Thank nice you, job. Captain. You're welcome. Yeah. You want to get one together here? Too? Yeah. Look at that. Well, guys, we made a move. We made a 20 mile run out even deeper, and we're in 156 feet anchored now. And, oh, Nick just caught a giant mutton snapper. And I caught a red snapper, and we can't keep red snappers, so we sent it back down on the, the sending device. This might be another big red snapper. Ooh, this fish is gonna be big. I feel like I'm single with your Vic, but I guess I'm not. Oh, a big old red snapper. Too bad it's not a mutton, huh? All right, guys, so, woo! <laughs> Giant red snapper out of season. This thing has a bunch of air in it. Its stomach is, uh, blown up in there so we're going to send it down on the device here and Nick's got this epic GoPro mount and we're going to have cool footage as we release this guy back down. Alright so that's on. You can see how it's floating there so he would just float off if you're releasing on the surface. We're going to send it down with a couple of pounds of weight. Nice and slow he's going to go because he could probably use three pounds but you can see the two pounds getting him down. And I actually have that set to release at 150 feet and we're fishing in 157. So we're gonna get him all the way back down to the structure he came from. He'll be uh, free to fight another day. We are at our third stop. It's been a crazy day already. Huge mangroves, yellow tails, muttons, big red snapper. Captain Tanner said that this is the spot that we have to be ready. He got broken off by some big ones last time and he would not be surprised to see a huge gag or black grouper come up here. So we're gearing up with the heavy tackle. Victor's tying up and getting ready for the grouper of a lifetime to come up. Get after it. Okay, going down, guys. Cameraman going down. A giant. Joints. You're gonna be the only one to catch a gag grouper all day. Ah, oh, that would be bad. We're on, guys. We're on. Here we go. Woo! Get him! Dennis in on the action. <laughs> no way, this is a good one. See color. Oh, it's a red grouper. Big old red. Red. Woo! Groupers are here. Well, yeah, this is my biggest red grouper ever, thanks to Captain Tanner. Uh, thanks to Land Shark, obviously. It's not in season, so feels, gotta feels, go back. Feels good to drop a, a bait down every once in a while, you know? Catch a quick fish while Victor's fighting the shark. <laughs> but we're gonna throw him on the descender here. You wanna measure him? Get him back down. Yeah. 
Oh, I'm exhausted. <laughs> back to the dock here with Captain Tanner from Real Deal. Uh, honestly an awesome day out there. We didn't get the gags we were looking for but we got literally everything else and just the first stop would have been probably a, a heck of a trip for anyone else out there. Tanner let people know where we can come find you. Book a charter. So you can reach me at Real Deal Charters Southwest Florida .com, or you can call me directly at my phone. I'm also on Instagram and Facebook at Captain Tanner Ison. Honestly, it was an awesome day. I really appreciate everything Tanner did for us. Also, like I mentioned before, he actually went through our training and got our gear a while ago on his own before I have ever even met him. So great to, uh, great to go out with a captain that's conscious about the environment and the fishery and really doing what he can to take care of it. Yep, it's my livelihood, so you gotta take care of the fish that are too small or that you can't keep. You just gotta send them back to the bottom. Hopefully you catch them when they're bigger or when they come in season. And we did plenty of that today, but we also filled the box, so we'll be excited to show you all that. Lastly, I got to give a huge shout out to Brooke with Brooke Christ Outdoors, Victor, Land Shark Outdoors, obviously Dennis as well. Um, honestly, it was a pleasure fishing with them. It's great to go on trips like this when you have good company and also great anglers. So we killed it out there, and we'll see you all next time. I just wanted to say that this was my first time ever using a descending device. And I absolutely loved learning all about it today. Um, I had seen videos of it before, but actually seeing how easy it is to use. I can't wait to bring it home and start using it on our own boat. So thank you so much for showing us the ropes of it. We let go a lot of fish today and it was awesome to see all of them get down to the bottom to live another day. So You'll get to see lots of cool underwater footage from the day too. So again, thank you, Brooke. Thank you, Victor. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Captain. Uh, and we're gonna clean some of these fish and get out of here. All right, so we are back here in Tarpon Springs. We had an awesome trip yesterday out of Marco Island with Captain Tanner of Real Deal Charters. Uh, we absolutely hammered the yellowtail snapper, mangrove snapper, um, got an awesome mutton, the biggest one of my life, uh, on a jig as well. Got a nice black grouper, a big goliath grouper on a jig as well. It was an incredible trip. Um, so we brought back some fish. I typically like to gut these fish and pack them on ice at the dock right afterwards, but uh, it was a late night, didn't get back home till around 11 p.m. Um, so we're gonna uh, gut some of these fish and show you all how to fillet them. So this is a big mangrove that we caught. <laughs> Believe it or not, this is not even close to one of the biggest ones. And we were catching these on 3000 series spinners right off the surface. Honestly, an incredible fishery that far out of Marco Island. Um, so we got a few of these and a few yellowtail to bring back for dinner. Um, and the mutton snapper, which you will see on our video, which will be awesome. I have several knives here. Um, I don't use any specific brand knife. I have a Bass Pro, Rapala, Mustad, Danko. I have a Dexter. Um, and you can see with coolers, I'm all over the place too. I got an Igloo, a Yeti. I have an angle cooler I use over there on my paddle board. So we got all kinds of brands here. I pretty much use whatever works for me, but let's get into this mangrove snapper. This is a more rigid knife. I believe it's a seven inch uh, medium flex. So I like to start by cutting down behind the pec fin, all the way up to the dorsal spines with that. Work our way back this way. And I like to actually pull some of these guts out I'm using a glove here because uh, my hands got a little cut up yesterday. I don't normally uh, like to do that, but try to protect the fingers a little bit more today. So I have a bucket here for those guts. Now that that's settled, cut down. So what I'm going to do is flip this fish, turn this around. We're going to work our way along the dorsal spines back here, running our knife along the bones. So I'm gonna start with making a little slit here, work our way up. And you'll see once 
once you get started on this process, the knife just slides very easily right along the bones there. You can see I'm just running that knife down. And then once you get that cut started, you'll just run your knife along those bones. And basically you're pulling up on the meat. So you're pulling the meat away from the bones. And then once you get to that vertebrae, and from there, you want to work your way back down the fish the other way, taking advantage of as much of that meat as possible. So I'm over the other side. Once I'm over, I'm going to angle the knife down, saw backwards. And you can even go from the bottom, so sometimes I like to finish off this cut, just like that. Go from the bottom up, so you can see I'm already through. And then I like to actually just kind of lift up, separate, and I'm going to go right through the rib cage. Some people like to go uh, around the ribs, but I like to go straight through. You see that? Look at that beautiful piece of meat. Mangrove snapper, one of my favorite fish to eat. And you'll see that I left this attached here. So some people like to just cut all the way through and then hold on to the skin. I like to leave it attached, run my knife down, down to the skin. That way you have a better grip here. And I'm actually just shimmying my knife right along the skin. Just like that. We have a beautiful filet. I mean, look at that. I'm going to cut out that bloodline. Um, you see there's nothing left. This is just some of the ribs here. So from here, come back to the filet. Get the rest of those rib bones out. Make a couple cuts here. There's actually some, a few smaller bones that run along the center line here. So I'm going to cut back and then angle the knife so we're not missing any of that meat. And just like that, that filet is ready to go. Uh, a couple little pieces of skin here I'm going to clean up. And when it comes to this bloodline here, um, so people always ask me, do I have to cut out the bloodline? You don't have to, but this bloodline will give the fish, the filet, a little bit more of that fishy taste. So if you don't like that, which most people I would say don't, um, but some people do whatever your preference, cut that out. And we have two beautiful pieces of filet right there. And that's just half, so we'll throw this in a bag, put it on ice, got a bag right here, got ice in the Yeti. One of my favorite fish to eat, and that's ready to go on the skillet. Cook it numerous different ways, but sometimes a little butter, olive oil, and garlic. Over some rice. It's one of my favorite ways, and it looks like we got a storm coming, so it might be getting darker on camera. Two more beautiful fillets. And there we have it. That's how we fillet our mangrove snapper. And I think I mentioned here, one of the best parts of a fish that a lot of people don't eat is this collar or the wings. So there's actually an attachment here, right here up under the gills. So there's a little bone that attaches there. You can reach your finger under there and on some smaller fish, you can pop it yourself. So I pop that, now pull backwards. And then you can actually just rip it right out. See that? 
and those are your wings. So that's an awesome piece of meat right there. Um, it's almost like dark meat on like a chicken or turkey. So I'll cook this and just eat it right out with a fork. But an amazing part of the fish you definitely don't want to waste. You do not want to waste that part. And this fish is all done.